Do you want to transform your body like some of these people? Then these are some truths about dieting that we learned personally, and we're going to share them with you today. Listen, guys, you've seen us eat hundreds of thousands of calories on camera. I think we know a little bit about caloric intake. Um, Let's just take a look at these transformations, Andrew. Most of these are of white people. This is just what was posted on the internet. Andrew, these women look dramatically different just from eating salads. Yeah, and you're saying most of these trans uh, transformations, they're saying that this is mostly from dieting, what they ate and didn't eat, not as much about based around the exercise. I'm sure some of them exercise, by the way. Right, right, right. So to achieve this type of transformation, Andrew, do you have to eat like this every day? Oh my gosh. I mean, listen, some of this looks good, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going for the more meaty dishes personally. Right, right, I don't right. know about that whole plate of egg whites. That's so, crazy. Some of the more paleocentric options. Well, here's the truth, Andrew. Yes and no, because Andrew, it is a simple calculation of calories in, calories out. In stands for intake, out stands for output. Today, Andrew, we are gonna be focused on calories consumed. By the way, I did find one Hapa Asian guy. Whoa. Yes. Yo, dude is a stud. He, dude became a model, let me went, tell you this. He went from Patrick Starr to the, the star of Twilight. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Sauce at smilelessauce.com. Andrew, um, long story short, everybody knows that if you don't eat anything and you work out a lot, you're going to lose weight, right? But right. would you say that most people in America are simply struggling with having too many delicious, high caloric, dense food options that are essentially really bad for your caloric intake? Yeah, and listen, guys, we know delicious food. Trust me. And we've eaten a lot, and I still eat delicious food to this day. But I think that there's a way that you can kind of balance it out, still get some taste, still go out to eat, still have your fun, but also actually meet your caloric deficit, right, which right, right. is key, right? You want to burn more calories throughout the day than you take in. Right, right, right. So we're gonna be focusing on half the equation today, guys. Here are 11 truths that nobody ever talks about when it comes to dieting, and these are coming from a foodie's perspective. Right. From it, people who eat delicious things. Every single one of these photos of delicious things, Andrew, we've eaten it on camera. Yeah. Point number one, you gotta eat clean at home so you can enjoy eating out more both from a guilt and a taste perspective. Mm. So I remember we were in Canada and I was saying that I was really cutting back my simple carbohydrate intake. And our cousin was like, yeah, but how can you enjoy life though? Mm. And then I remember just thinking in my head, uh, I've been doing a lot of research. Girls in particular, phys physiology wise, extra enjoy carb intake, mm. right? But yeah, I mean, we're talking about carbs as in like, sugars, breads, you know, things that uh, there, there's sugars inside of breads, rice, Nummy noodles, pastries. pastries, fluffy buns. We get it. So I think the key is if you cook at home more, you will reset your taste buds. So even when you do go out to eat your cheat meals or whatever, just your loose freestyle meals more, you'll enjoy them even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was doing a lot of research on the internet and there's this thing called they call it the taste palpability reward hypothesis, meaning that you want to eat diet foods that are kind of good. That means it's not a struggle to eat them, but you don't want to make them too tasty or else you're going to crave and want to eat more and then you might overeat. So the key is to not overeat because at the end of the day, listen, even if you're eating healthy foods, you can overeat healthy foods and that still can actually make you gain weight Maybe, you know, maybe it's better for your health because it's better foods, but ultimately you will gain fat because you have a caloric intake. Right, surplus. right, right. I would say that most people mess up on sweet fruits. Uh, they mess up on nuts and they mess up on protein powder. Right. They overeat those Al things. Almond butter too, yeah. because almond butter is healthy for you or avocados. They might have like six avocados in a yeah. day. I mean, let's be honest. We all love using oils, small as oil, olive oil. If you use too much of it all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, you know. Point, harsh truth from a foodie number two. When you eat out three times a day, it's really not that enjoyable anymore. I mean, literally, it just has to do with what? What are you talking about, David? Yeah, no, it just has to do with diminishing marginal value, mm. right? Like, I mean, you're just not going to enjoy it when it almost becomes your normal baseline because human nature is we normalize our expectations to what is like a pattern in our life. Right, and I'll tell you this, if you live in the city or if you live in Queens around so much good food or you live in Manhattan, there is so much good food and still cheap food around that it is hard to not want to eat out at least two meals a day. No, six to six, bro. We were eating out three times a day easily. Yeah. That All was right. going that, crazy. That was a little much and very, by the way, it was very costly, but we were making content about it at the time. Uh, point number three, unless you rotate like 
cuisines all the time, you're going to ultimately end up eating the same things at a lot of new American restaurants anyway. So really, are, why are you, you're eating calories without even experiencing something new. Right, right, right. And you're saying like experiencing something new uh, for those people who really value it, it does something for your brain. Like just as much as eating a lot of bread might release serotonin and make you feel good. Also for me, like eating something new makes me feel good in a different way, even if it's not the tastiest thing I've ever had. Right. I'm like, just like, oh, wow. I'm like, I'm kind of like, uh, I guess I, you know, I enjoy that in my own way. Right. For example, we recently had this Balkan street burger from Serbia and it was like, I really, I knew that that on a caloric like macro level was not good, but I still ate it, but I didn't eat the whole thing because I still wanted to get that uh, interesting experience. And now if I meet somebody from Serbia, I could talk about not just Jokic, I could talk about the Balkan street burgers. Guys, the three bite rule. All you need is three good bites to really enjoy something and say that you've had it and for it to stick in your memory. That's Point what number I think. four, Andrew, an air fryer is incredibly... I cannot overstate this. Super key to achieving your dieting or weight loss goals. Hey, this is not an ad for an air fryer. We are not getting sponsored by an air fryer. Although, Kasori, somebody. Ninja. Ninja, hit us up. Instant pop, whatever. Um, I think it's really difficult to cook carbs in an air fryer. And actually, carbs is the easiest thing that can put you in a caloric surplus. Right, right. And I would say, honestly, like chicken, and even steak in a different way, but you got to do steak properly. But chicken for sure is already the easiest, best thing to put in an air fryer. Right, right, right. And especially nowadays with parchment paper and things like that, essentially the cleanup is nothing. Yeah. And the air fryer makes it easy to make food so you don't have to, you know, it has its own fan. You can stick it out the window or you can put it under your range hood so it doesn't make the house smell. Point number five, it all boils down like every single diet boils down to the same result, but with different pathways. For example, Andrew, look at all these popular diets, keto, intermittent fasting, paleo, low fat, weight watchers, whole 30, sugar free. What is the key for every single one of these diets? Caloric deficit. Literally, that's it. Caloric intake, caloric output. There's this meme that says carbs don't make you fat, overeating makes you fat. Now it is, you know, I'm not a scientist in this, but we've done a lot of research. Carbs are not like poison to your body. It's just that it's easy to overeat them. Right, you need carbs for energy, right? Yeah, Especially you need clean carbs if you're a jogger or an athlete, you need them. No, if you're about to work out and burn a lot of calories, it is helpful to carb load. That's when you eat a bunch of pasta the night before. If you really right. got a marathon, obviously, before track meets, the night before a whole track meet, I would eat pastas and I'd eat sandwiches a day. So of course there is a time to carb load, Right, but- it's also not overeating those carbs and making sure if you are carb loading that you're working out. You know too. why that is, Andrew? Because carbs are starch. Starch will inevitably metabolize, convert to sugar. Sugar will turn into fat. Right. So ultimately, even though you're, you're like, oh, I was just eating a piece of bread. It doesn't feel bad. If you don't burn it off, it will inevitably end up as fat. Right. Point number six, focus on foods that are healthy, nutrient-dense but are still universally enjoyable. Mm. Listen, nobody's saying you need to eat livers. You could eat sweet potatoes, salmon fillets, roasted chicken thighs. Look at this plate, Andrew, with the salmon fillets. That looks good with roasted veggies, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we make some... I mean, I, I feel like I, I, I like some of the dishes that we've been making at home. And I would say this, like, basically, you want the nutrient-dense foods because they satiate you and they keep you full longer. Like, I noticed, so the other day... And I'm going to tell David, I brought home that burger from Burger Head in New York. One of my favorite burgers in all. The in and out. The yeah. Not, not I got two of them and they were double patties, right? So these are big burgers. And I ate one whole burger with the pad, with the bun and everything. So that's a little bit of carbs right there. But then I had another half of that burger and I just ate the meat part. And right. literally I was full for like six hours and that's all I ate. So to me, it wasn't that bad because I had a little bit of carbs, lots of meat, Pickles, tomato, obviously a little bit of mayo and sauce, but like I wasn't hungry f at all for like so much of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people think that like uh, lean proteins are not going to taste good, but you could put sauces on them and look at all these uh, vast array of low calorie sauces that are available. For example, Andrew, this is a little bit just to bring the Asian element back in. Chanko Nabe, which is like a sumo dish, is one of my favorite dishes in the entire world. It's probably the best meal I had in Tokyo. And uh, you can actually make it super low calorie and carb free with uh, calorie free uh, shiraki noodles and uh, ultra lean versions of chicken and things like that. So mm. it goes to show you, that's one of my favorite meals in the the entire world chanko nabe now 
Now, we do have to acknowledge, David, a lot of good tasting sauces and foods can be very salty. And yeah. salt, although I don't think it's the same, it's not, obviously not the same as sugars, but you don't want to overeat sodium either. Yeah. I mean, that's the other side of it. And you can do things like apple cider vinegar and prevent glucose spikes and all this. It gets really advanced once you want to get into the molecular granular aspects of health. Number seven, it's actually cheaper and healthier to, to, than eating out to cook at home. Yeah, dude, I'll tell you this, man. Eating out, I've realized that, yes, there is a certain taste that is very hard to achieve at home. In fact, in some ways, you can never reach it. But that's also because they're making food to taste good, not to be healthy. At home, like, look at what we're making. We're making lean, um, round eye steak with my uh, inspired uh, crying tiger sauce. You know, I got this ginger scallion chicken that's baked. It looks ugly, right. but it tasted really good. I made this steak sandwich. Okay, that was bread. I, I made the carb intake uh, with my girlfriend. But then this is a chicken soup that I've been making that's, that's very uh, low calorie too and very tasty. Right, like um, a top sirloin steak, if you get it at home, it could be $8. It's $30 at the restaurant. Roasted Brussels sprouts at home might cost you $3. Eating out, it's like 13 So it's about like, 20 to 25 percent of the cost once you factor in like taxes and tips and ubers and things like that it's like oh. literally a fifth of the price for the same dish oh yeah and, and it's healthier yeah but yeah i might be missing like one or two seasonings sure 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 definitely but like if you can get it to taste seven out of ten as the restaurant with four out of ten of the cost um, yeah and then it, the health is better guys yeah, let's just be conservative here. You're looking at 25% of the cost, 25% of the calories, and uh, like 75, 80% of the taste, mm -hmm. right? So that's just the math, math in that situation. Point number eight, Andrew, do you want a high volume of healthy food or a very low volume of unhealthy food? Oh, let's just so, so you're saying people could potentially eat more unhealthy foods, but they can't eat as much of it versus... No, 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 they can amount. eat a small volume of unhealthy food or that you can eat a large volume of healthy food. Right, but the small volume of unhealthy food technically might be the same amount of calories, but they're not going to be the same type of calories and it's not yeah. going to be the same type of energy. Just look at this. Look at these dried sugar fruits that fit on the palm of a woman's hand versus a gigantic bowl of fresh fruit. Um, popcorn, three cups of popcorn versus nine chips. I mean, I, I just pop these up here, guys. Listen, the math... Just look at it. Yeah. It's visual. Point number nine, Andrew. This applies to drinks as well. One pina colada is equivalent to 10 vodka or tequila sodas. Whoa. And listen, every major drink brand in 2024, I don't care what it is, they're going to have a low calorie, low carb option. Even for your favorite beer, Japanese beer. I just had a recent Suntory beer that tastes exactly like Suntory. Zero cows, zero everything. I don't even know how they did it, to be honest. I, it was like uh, witchcraft. Number 10, there are healthy trap foods, such as fruits and nuts and protein bars, where they're technically healthy, but it's really easy to overeat them. So they're healthy, but they're still trap foods. Right. So almost everything, a lot of foods can be healthy when eaten in the right amount, but almost everything can make you gain weight if you overeat it. So right. that's why the key, and uh, I think it's funny because nuts are something that obviously people are like, oh, it has good fats, it's good fats. It's good you know. for your gut. Yeah, yeah, it's good for your guts. And yeah, I mean, I think generally you're eating the seed of something, you know, it has a lot of nutrients, but you can overeat and still overeating nuts will still make you gain weight. Right. You can overeat eggs or even avocados. I think eggs of the nutrient-dense, like, seed-type, birthing-type things is the least caloric-dense. Right, right, despite right. Despite having the most nutrients. And it, eggs is, is a super cheat code because they're cheap, too, and they're super nutrient-packed. Number 11, there is a low-calorie, good-tasting version of anything. A lot of people, you know, when we were looking at the decadent foods, Andrew, there were so many cheesecakes in there. Cheesecakes are incredibly caloric dense. There are Greek yogurt and Skyr cheesecakes that are available nowadays. Mm. And there's even ones that they sell at the store that are pre-made if you don't want to make your own. Listen, if you want to just go the easiest route, you just get the strawberry cheesecake Chobani zero sugar. And if you want to go one more level, you could take triple zero Greek yogurt and then just mix in sugar-free jello like cheesecake mix. And then that will taste actually like cheesecake. And then you don't wow. have the crust. Wow. Um, 
There's also low calorie versions of everything nowadays, Andrew. There's low calorie mayo, tuna, smart pop, low calorie dressings, Halo Topper, Nick's ice cream. There's low calorie movie theater, butter spray, smart sweets. And they're usually going to use the word low carb, low calorie keto or the word smart in front of it. Right, right, right. And you know why it's smart, Andrew? Because it's like 70% of the taste for 40% of the calories. Think about the math, guys. It's not 40% of the taste for 40% of the calories. Mm -hmm. so, so it works out. Andrew, a big trend right now for cake lovers is diet soda cake. This tastes like a brownie, and it's literally 40% of the calories of mixing a bunch of eggs and sugar and whipped cream into your cake mix. For example, let me just break down somebody's OMAD meal, Andrew. This is somebody's one meal a day. I really, for, for me, I would never do this diet. What do you mean? Oh, just a bunch of pizza and Halo Top yeah, and a yeah. Budweiser beer? Yeah, yeah. This, they got to 960 calories. This is all they ate in one day. And I'm saying, listen, you could just go get the Suntory All Zero. So you're saving 50 cows right there. You could go with a tortilla pizza, get way more turkey protein. It would relatively taste the same. You could still have 200 calories left over for a healthy snack right here. Boom, you got, you know... You know, little Greek yogurt or tzatziki, you know, low-fat tzatziki with some fruit and some turkey slices. And you could eat Nick's ice cream, and it's going to taste better. So, But, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you do the OMAD with the Domino's and it works, go for it. Let's take a look, Andrew, next at fast food. This is a sandwich from Chick-fil-A that has 600 calories. Mm. You could eat that, or you could eat a whole plate, a whole dinner of tilapia. Mm. Okay, but let's just say you dropped the bun. You went protein style. You're at 400 calories now. You already saved 200 off the rip on the Chick-fil-A. Now, this is what are these plates are also 400 calories. Wow. Looks good, right? Yeah. And uh, you could replace buffalo chicken wings. That's 600 calories with the dip. And it goes all the way down to 200 calories if you did buffalo broccoli, but cauliflower bites. Oh, that's a tough switch yeah, up, yeah, though. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to lie. From chicken to broccoli or cauliflower. But, but, but for some people, they're just addicted to that. Flavor. That buffalo wing. No, yeah. Box. Sometimes you just want the flavor. I for get some it. people, listen. I'm just showing what other people. In another video, I'm gonna show what works for me. That probably wouldn't work for me. Here are people who are eating 1,500 calories in a day, and this is a breakdown of everything you can eat. No matter how big or small of a man or woman you are, if you eat 1,500 clean calories in a day, or even if they're dirty calories, you will lose weight. Uh. Think about it. That I'm just showing you. That's a decent amount of food, right? For me, if I was going to hit 1,500 calories in a day, this is what I do, Andrew. Breakfast, I do an avocado, four eggs, 300. I do a Korean sweet potato, that's 100. Four ounces of steak, that's 300. Then I do small baked steel oats with blueberries and nonfat whip, that's 200. Two chicken drumsticks with soy sauce would put me at 300. Then I'd have watermelon, and that would put me at 1,500 in a day. Listen, if I played basketball that day, I'd burn 2,500. I'd be in a 1,000 calorie caloric deficit for that day. Wow. If I did that over two weeks, I would lose, no, I would lose two pounds a week. I could lose eight pounds in a month if I did that every day. Because everybody, yeah, obviously your burn rate depends on what size you are and what else you're doing. It is hard day. to burn 2,500 calories in a day. That's, that's a lot. Right. Um, here are other people, Andrew. These people are sharing their diets at 1,200 calories a day. Whoa. Your average American is probably intaking Double this, if not more. Oh, yeah. I would say so. I mean, do, these, me do, do these meals look like they could pass for you? Okay. I, I could do some of these meals. I don't think I could do this every day for seven days. First of all, I don't need to because I already intermittent fast, which is something else we didn't talk about. Well, but you're probably been, skipping breakfast, right? So you don't Yeah, need I've, I've been doing that. that for years. I pretty much essentially don't eat for anywhere from 14 to 16 hours. Uh, but, yeah, some of these are pretty good. I would definitely do some of these, man. Eggs, salad. Little salt, little bit of sugar there. Got some sweetness. I like it. And I think the key is once you've seen people really break down what 1,500 calories looks like in a day and what 1,200 calories looks like, it's like you just have a better idea for what you're consuming mm -hmm. because you've looked at so many reps and so many repetitions of what other people are doing. Um, like I said, that, that's, that's, those are the 11 harsh truths from foodies, but let me just go through a few foods that I think are really good uh, that anybody can eat. Like, these are things, these are almost like cheat codes. Andrew. These are sweet foods. Yeah, fruit and yogurt. Okay. Look, you could put artificial sweeteners in there that are zero calorie, vanilla extract, cinnamon. You can freeze grapes. Some people who are addicted to sour heads, Andrew, they froze cotton candy grapes, and then they dipped them in lemonade crystals. 
Uh, and it tastes, you know what I mean, for those no, people. No, it tastes like candy. It tastes like a Sour Patch. No, it's like for the people who need the diet soda cake. Right. Like, they can't leave their decadent foods right, alone. Right, right, right. Um, this is like, that's like vaping when you're trying to quit cigarettes. Right, right, right. Listen, you can make it fun with quirky foods you've never even seen before, Andrew. Look at egg in a hole. Yeah. This is when you core out the bread, you throw an egg in there yeah. in the air fryer. There's steel cut oat cakes that you can bake. I got on this off of Reddit recipe. Yo, you, you've been on this hard. I'm not going to lie. Those cakes, they look pretty wild coming out of the air fryer. But whatever works, man. Right. You can add protein powder to these cakes. Other people cook protein waffles and protein pancakes. I've seen that. You, dude, you can put protein powder in like virtually anything. Oh, uh, you can put eggs in Skyer or eggs in cottage cheese to really give the eggs a fluffy volume. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, cold brew plus protein powder. Mm -hmm. Like we said, you could put creatine in it. You could put whatever you want, get you going in the morning and check off a bunch of checklists of four birds with one stone. Low carb, low carb wheat bread with avocado, egg and cheese. I mean, Easy. they're pretty, Simple. pretty, you know, whatever. Zero calorie drinks. Simple. Zero calorie drinks taste good in 2024. A lot of right. people don't know. Cottage cheese, Italian pasta. Yo, that's crazy. Instead of Alfredo sauce, you got cottage cheese Alfredo sauce. Yes. Uh, look at this. Kim I'm a little skeptical of that, but I got to try it. Look at this kimchi, egg, and cucumber plate. That looks good. That yes. looks like a nice cool down. Or you got some meat. 94 calories. Obviously, it depends on how much sesame oil you end up dousing it with. Right, and there's also sodium in that. But ultimately, I think people will take more sodium over the... The sugars. Honestly. I'm going to take, for me, listen, guys, there's always trade-offs. If you want the, the hyper-tasty, low-calorie, low-carb foods, you may have to take slight sodium increase in the seasonings and the spices. But, you know, it's up to you guys. It just depends on how granular and how specific and you want to get with stuff. Stuffed bell peppers. Like some little pop. But stuffed with what? No, you can put um, meat, cheese in them. Yeah. Anything. You know what I love? I, I think overall, man, a lot of people got to understand that, like, when you eat protein, and especially not the fattiest protein, I get it. There's like short rib. There's the super fatty beef that you get in hot pot where it like looks like beef bacon. You know, that obviously has a lot of fat. But honestly, if you can just like you can eat steak, you can eat chicken, you can eat eggs, man. All those foods are like they're super satiating, high protein. You know, yeah, you might put some salt, put a little oil on there. But ultimately, if that makes you full for like half the day, then that's great. You're gonna that you're on a, on the right track. It's just like you're not constantly eating and snacking all the time, overeating. Right. So ultimately, guys, here are my takeaways. I think it's just way easier than you think to go over calories, and it's way easier than you think to eat delicious foods that are lower in calorie. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but I, I don't think that until literally you show people photos of people showing their 1500 calorie day or 1200 calorie day, you don't really notice that. And if you do this throughout the week, it allows you to have a Friday or a Saturday where you went to like 2,700. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that's the key here. And if you are going to drink on the weekends, I think the biggest key is, Andrew, you just can't eat pizza while you're drunk. Right, and then also just get the soda and, and liquor. You know what I mean? Like vodka soda, tequila soda, basically. Right, right, right. Diets. Yeah, Diet and not, so, not Sprite soda. I'm talking about soda water, obviously. right. And I think once you develop an IQ from making these quick reads on food, you don't really need to count everything out. Because mm -hmm. I noticed for a lot of people, counting every single calorie that's going into their body over a day, it's just like, they're just not used to tracking it like that. It wears them out. Super stressful, yeah. Yeah. So listen, guys. Listen, we still go to spots. We still try decadent foods. But I'm just saying at home, this is the way our home life has been reworked. Right. Yeah. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what are some of your tips and tricks, uh, maybe even throw out some of the, 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 the easy recipes you use at home to make, make something tasty, but not too tasty. Again, not too tasty because then you're going to want to eat more, uh, but tasty enough. Here's my number one. For me, sweet potatoes, whether they're purple, white, or orange, you can make a sweet potato taste like savory, like a baked potato from like wherever your most decadent baked potato is, all the way to just like a tasty Asian treat. Do you got one? I said, I'm going with sweet potatoes. I mean, you know me. I'd, I'd like to do steak and lean steak. You just got to marinate it. Everything, just give it a couple hours of marinating. I even poke well, holes in the steak sometimes. I don't even get the, the fattiest meat. You don't need the fat. You don't need ribeye. You know? Steak, onion, mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, let us know in the comments down below, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.